since you already uh, built your uh, our home gym in the backyard and you and you're in a real good learning mood and you and you're firing crisp. Good job on the home gym. You'll show a video with that later. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, standalone ECUs, how they work, how you put them together, wiring. And um, this tends to be something that's kind of daunting for people with bikes. But um, anyway, what we have, you can turn on your light. Point it at the max. So we have a max ECU here. And... This is the race version, and this is a real popular standalone for uh, Hayabusa, Turbo Hayabusa, or, or nitrous bikes, or the, basically uh, any kind of modified Suzuki. People really love this ECU, and um, um, it's, a, it's really, really easy to use, at least easy to wire. Uh, we still have someone that helps us configure things whenever we want to use various options, but to show you how nice it is, you can turn off your light. It operates by Bluetooth. So this is going to be the dash for the car. It'll sit like that. And there's a little antenna that'll send a Bluetooth signal to the dash. And here's how it works, little buddy. Um, That's me. All of your wires are labeled. And so there's uh, several basic things that you wire to make your engine run. If it's fuel injected, you're going to have fuel injectors. You're going to have oil pressure. And in, the, in this case, we have a flex fuel sensor. Turn on your light. It's right there. There's a flex fuel sensor there. Red, black, and white wire coming out of that sensor. Um, you're going to have a crank position sensor and a cam position sensor. Um, there's going to be an air temp sensor right there. Uh, an oil pressure sensor. So what I've done is all of the necessary things, all of the necessary stuff that's stock on the engine, I've been able to find on this wire diagram. And I basically just use what's labeled here to wire in to the engine. And what we do is we'll basically sacrifice a stock um, wire harness and we can use the remnants of that wire harness to work um, other auxiliary uh, functions like brake light, horn, turn signals. And so what I'll do is I'll show you that I've been able to keep the handlebar switches from the stock bike and I've been able to run those wires, the stock harness is under there. But I've been able to marry the stock wire harness with the Max and continue to use, like I said, the handlebar controls. So the car will have high beam, low beam, turn signal, brake light, running light, brake light. And um, here's what's really cool about this setup. Every wire is labeled. So hold that. I'll try to zoom in on it. You can see how this says engine ground Q4. G4. G4. So that was a part of the uh, Lambda sensor. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you also have your wide, uh, your wide band O2 sensor that's on the uh, dump pipe for the turbo but we will kill you light what we have are two um, standalone solid state relay boxes and so what I've done is I've been able to label them so this oil here is for an oil scavenger pump for the turbo 
I have uh, water written here, or abbreviated. This is for the uh, air to water intercooler. So I have an air to water intercooler and there's a pump with a heat exchanger in one of my little vent holes on the side of the car. So you can see a little, a little bit of red poking through there. And what that is, is this little vent opening down here. You have to excuse this car being dusty and dirty. We'll clean it up. Here's my ignition, my ECU, power, the fuel pump, and the uh, twin fans at the front of the car where the radiator is. And so what I want is I want this water pump. I don't, I don't necessarily want the uh, air to water intercooler to run the entire time, but I do know that I want it running when the um, radiator fans kick on. So when the ECU decides that the engine needs to kick on the fans, it'll also kick on the pump to cool that intake charge. And so what I've been able to do is I've been able to ask this ground output here to share a signal such that when the fan turns on, the water pump for the intercooler also turns on. So I basically ran a little wire from here to here. And on our ECU map, um, the fan, general purpose output six fan, that's here. So the ECU will send a ground signal to the solid state relay kick on the fan and it'll also kick on the water pump and so a lot of people are spending crazy money on solid state relays but this company stinger i think this is basically set up for like i think this is like a car audio company but it's basically half the price of the msd version that's so popular everyone likes to use So I obviously put my fans on the higher 40 amp output and then the smaller things like the fuel pump, the ECU, uh, ignition coils, you know, they go on the 20 amp outputs. What questions do you have? Does it matter? So you've got the fans and the water uh, the kicking on at the same time. Is that triggered by uh, temperature or what is it triggered by? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the ECU, there's, there's also a water temp sensor that's on the head somewhere down there <laughs> anyway when the water temp sensor reaches a certain number the, the way that the ecu is configured it'll decide when to turn on the fans for extra cooling and so like i said that'll coincide with the air going into the motor being cooled with water Standalone ECUs used to be an exotic thing, and the first time I ever heard about one was in that first Fast and Furious movie. Standalone, not $10,000 for standalone fuel management. What did Vin Diesel say? It's about famous. <laughs> 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 that was Tony Baker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's about family. <laughs> he said it's not a bad way to spend ten grand. Well, now you don't have to spend ten thousand uh, dollars. These ECUs have come down to like under two thousand. So that ECU and the entire wire harness and the wire harness that you get with it is basically long enough to do a car. So when you're doing a motorcycle. Um, you know, you're, you're cutting down what you need. And whenever you have something that's labeled like that ground wire, you know, it's, it's, it's labeled every so many inches. So whatever you have to cut off, you're not cutting off the label of the wire. You're just cutting off that section of it. So like I said, every, every so many inches, it'll be labeled in black or white. And um, it's, it's a very, very nice system. Very user friendly. I can't, I can't praise it enough. I've never done anything with wiring. And I learned the hard way how to save money um, by doing your own wire harness. And we did another video with a um, turbo GSXR 1000 engine rebuild. And that was the first wire harness that I learned how to wire. But um, 
um, you know, the second one, the third one, you know, they all become easier and easier, you know. So when I, when I talk about marrying the um, stock wire harness to the um, standalone so that I can, you can technically run all of those features, turn signal, horn, high beam, low beam, brake light, um, you know, your fuse box. You, you can technically run all of that through this. And um, I, I, since I already had a system set up, and it only takes like one or two wires. Um, I figured I would use some of the stock stuff as well as, you know, the, the fuel management for the engine. So uh, I guess the way you could look at it is kind of like a car having a, an ECU for an engine and then a body control module for everything else. ECU, stereo, you know, all of the creature comforts inside of the car. But basically what I do is, is I have a key switch hidden in the body. And um, there's, a, there's a slick little way I've been able to hide how to turn the car on and off, and I've got a little security feature. But when I, when I turn on my key switch, I found one of the necessary wires that will also turn on the ECU and provide a 12 volt um, um, signal to the ignition. And so that's right there, that little whoop. That, that that red wire is coming from the switch on the stock ECU harness. And I have a lot of it tucked away because we're getting ready to finally start rolling this thing around. This is basically the only thing that's still showing from the stock harness. Everything else is hidden inside of that little pocket. The horn will be there, uh, hazard lights, um, the start stop button. Uh, that's, that's, the other, that's the other thing. Um, being able to start the motor, I was able to do that with the uh, starter from the uh, handlebar control, you know. So the brake switch, the clutch switch, I have switches that are literally on the uh, foot pedals. And those switches have a little sub harness that talk to the hand controls. And so the hand control tells uh, the brake light when to come on or, or uh, when the uh, clutch is um, engaged or not engaged, you know. And you can see my little shift lever there, my little doop de doop. Doop de doop. Oh, oh, and, and, and. My 3D printed shift pattern because I'm old enough to forget what direction I need to go to shift it in neutral or first. So I 3D printed that little clip on. And that clip on is basically one of the, that's, that's riding on one of the rails for the, um, uh, radiator. Right, yeah. yeah, coolant line. So you'll notice two aluminum tubes. So one is uh, coolant leaving the engine, one is coolant coming back, and it's being pumped from the motor. And uh, yeah, I got an e-brake. Two calipers on a single disc in the back. We'll find out if that's enough uh, braking force or not for the it's rear. Drifting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I thought I was going to have a lot more detail, but basically the, the point is, is, you know, at least this system, I don't know how Motec and Haltech and everyone else works, but at least with this system, you figure out what has to be managed on your engine block. What features on your engine block need to be uh, read? You know, um, if, if I wanted to run a boost controller, I have some pre-wiring done with the harness. Wait, where is it? So I have a boost solenoid output. And so I have some wiring done if I ever want to add boost control. And so I can go into the ECU and configure one of these extra outputs for an injector. I'm only running four injectors. So I can use one of these injector outputs here and turn it into um, um, an output for the boost control, the increase decrease valve for your boost controller, you know. Anything you wanna do to a race car, this system will allow it. And the only limit is what do you want to do in the moment? What do you want, how do you wanna use this car? This is gonna be a street car that we, that we periodically do fun stuff with. If I, if I sort it out, maybe we'll do um, uh, autocross. What's the capacity? Because the race has more capacity for more of those, we'll call them beat loops. <laughs> and 
than like the sport, right? Is it sport? Yeah, that's that's the lower tier. They have two more tiers going up with this ECU. But the difference is how many of these outputs you have. So the the, the sport version, um, instead of it giving you eight outputs for eight injectors, maybe it gives you six. And then, you know, instead of there being two main plugs, there's one. So the second plug here allows you to take advantage of EGTs, um, um, ride-by-wire throttle, um, and then you have extra um, analog inputs here. So if you have a speed sensor or, or boost pressure, you know, so those are some things that are pre-wired. With this car, I'm going to um, use GPS for the uh, speedometer. So I'm not really going to take advantage of the speed, the speed ring that's on the end of that counter shaft sprocket. Um, I figured I would just, just use GPS and do it accurate. This is a desert car. We have a lot of sunlight. Um, very little rain, so I'm not worried about the car getting wet, and, and we usually have uh, very good signals as far as, you know, being able to catch a GPS signal. So, um, anyway, what else? Uh, I think that's it. I was, just, I was just curious how far into the capacity of what you could add to the max um, as far as, like, your additional yeah. things to wire in. How, how far are you? How much room do you still have? So I've I've used maybe fifty five percent of what the thing will do. Oh my god! So um, you'll you'll literally see that there's a second plug that isn't even installed. So everything that I wanted to do, I was able to basically use that first plug. Yeah. Okay. So there's a short uh, crash course explanation of how standalone ECUs work how you wire them, how you use it. Um, leave questions in the comments and we love to respond. We appreciate everyone who leaves a response. Um, you don't have to watch our shitty videos, but since you do, thank you. And anyone who has a question, we like to uh, respond. And um, sometimes people give us good information. Sometimes we're able to answer questions that we don't think to ex explain in a video, but anyway, that's it.